Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at this Milwaukee M12 battery charger for power tools. We'll be doing a quick video on how to convert this from 120 volt input operation to 240 volts. So all we'll need is a screwdriver and we need a replacement MOV. Alright, so this is the back and it shows the model number that I have. As you can see for this particular model, it's a 120 volt input and we'll open it up and make a quick modification and have this run on 240 volts. Alright, to remove the cover, all we need is a T50 screwdriver. So I've removed three screws already. And let's remove the last one. And we should be inside. And there we go. Just a word of caution. Now if you have just plugged this charger in before you open it, please be mindful that the input filtering caps might still be charged. So I recommend leaving this charger aside for a while to make sure that they are completely discharged before you do any work on them. Alright, so here is the inside of the charger. And the thing that we will be interested in looking at is the circuitry that's at the input and from the mains cable. Okay, so I've gone ahead and analyzed the circuit board and this is a really simple version of what is actually on the board and I've left out some of the components um, but I have included the components that are of key interest. So first we have the input, live and neutral and in parallel to this, across this, uh, we have a MOV or metal oxide varistor. So this MOV is essentially a transient voltage suppressor in the event of a power surge, um, this MOV will be able to absorb the power. Now, the particular part number that's inside this charger is the 10N271K. And this particular part is only rated for 175 volts. So we will have to change this component and I have replaced this with a V14E300P 300 volt MOV. So this is the one over here. So we will be replacing it later on. So in line, on the lifeline, we have the NTC, which is a thermistor, and it's a type of resistor whose resistance is dependent on the temperature. And what this does is that it's used to prevent an inrush surge current when power is first turned on and current is flowing to charge up C1 and C2, which are the main filtering input capacitors. And because this is an NTC, we don't need to change this. Now, we look at the bridge rectifier, which is on the board, and these are made up of four discrete diodes and I've looked at the part number and the part number is RL207 and this turns out to be a 2 amp 100 volt diode so we don't need to change that and it's well within the voltage ratings and here comes the interesting part so we have two main filtering capacitors each one's uh, 200 volt and 100 microfarads this uh, we'll call them C1 and C2 and they are in fact arranged in series but the way that Milwaukee has designed this charger is to have them in almost like a voltage doubler circuit. So what we have is we have the neutral line that's tied to one end of the breach rectifier, but it's also tied to the middle of these two capacitors. So when power is first applied, let's, let's consider the case of the input sine wave. So let's consider the first half of the sine wave. So at the beginning, on the first half, the voltage of the lifeline with respect to neutral goes from 0 to 170 volts and this is for 120 volts AC so it goes up to 170 volts peak so if we follow that, this direction of the diodes we see that the positive line which we call V plus will be charged up to plus 170 volts now on the second half of the cycle when the voltage of the lifeline is negative with respect to neutral, then current flows in the other direction, and V minus with respect to this point, which is neutral, will be at a negative 170 volt potential. So the potential difference between V minus and V plus will be about 340 volts DC. So this is interesting because 
what we want is we want this system to run on 240 volts instead of 120 volts AC. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is to change this MOV into something that can handle the higher voltage. And what we'll do is we will cut this trace over here. And essentially what we'll have is simply a bridge rectifier that's full wave rectified. And we should also get 340 volts on the output because once we cut this line, it's no longer in voltage doubler mode. Okay, so now let's take a look at our actual board. So I will turn this around so you can see more clearly. Okay, so now we have, let's follow the lines. So we have the neutral line coming here. And we have the live line coming here. Now we have some additional filtering caps. We have a, our NTC over here, which is this green device. Um, and we have our metal oxide varistor, which is this yellow device. So we will be replacing that with this new one. We have an, a choke over here in the front end. I'm not sure if you can see this. Um, so these are the four main rectifying diodes for the full wave bridge rectifier. And over here, these are the two filtering capacitors. Okay, so this is the back of the board and I have drawn the position of some of the components so you can see what's going on. So over here, we let's follow the lines. Over here, we have the live line. So the live line comes in here and it goes across our NTC and it comes over here. So this is the lifeline now. And as you can see, it's there. It, it's connected to one and two diodes of the bridge rectifier. And then this is the neutral line. It's connected to one, another one of the bridge rectifier. And this neutral line comes up and it goes in between these two series capacitors. You can also see the two balancing resistors over here. So what we're going to do is first we're going to change out the MOV which is over here and second we will cut this trace right here and that's the middle trace that connects to the middle of the capacitors. Okay so back to our schematic. Now we note that we do not need to change these two capacitors because once we cut this trace, the balancing resistors will make sure that the voltage across each of these series capacitors would be half of 340 volts, which would be 170 volts. So what we have in the end after our modification is to one, make sure that our MOV is rated for the appropriate voltage. And two, by cutting this trace, we effectively change the circuit from a essentially a voltage doubler circuit into just a simple full wave bridge rectified um, output so we get the total of 340 volts DC across the positive and negative rails. So we don't need to change any other components other than this. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, first thing I'll do is to replace this yellow MOV with the red one and the second thing I'm going to do is to cut the trace and I'm going to do that with a pen knife. So I'm going to do this off camera just so it's a little bit more convenient and I will show you the results. Okay, just to show everyone, I have now removed the MOV, which was here. And I have also desoldered the MOV and removed the solder using solder wick. And over here you can see the original MOV on the right. And on the left is the new MOV. So what I've done is I've actually went to heat shrink um, and wrap the new MOV. And that's standard practice. I'm not quite sure why Milwaukee did not do it for this MOV. So the thing about MOVs is that it's a surge protector and in the event of a really large surge event, it might fragment and we want something to contain this mini explosion. So it's good practice to wrap it with heat shrink. So now I'm going to go ahead and solder that onto the board. So in fact, one of the easy things that you can do, here's a trick, is to use a big drill bit. So what I did was I went over here and then I twisted just by hand and you should be able to get most of the copper out 
and of course if you use a drill bit it's going to remove a circular hole so what you want to do is you, you can then go in with your pen knife and then you can clean up the edges and make sure that there's no cup over here because we, we really don't want any of this line to be connected to this center of the capacitors so with that our modification is mostly done but what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and then we will go ahead and put a piece of tape over it to make sure everything is good okay so now let's take a look at our complete modification so what we've done is we have cut the trace over here and we have removed the copper and as you can see I've put a piece of Kapton tape over it so this is part one of our modification and the second part is that we have now removed and replaced the MOV and we have the new one right over here and that's all so now what we can do is we can plug it into 240 volts and make sure that it runs well alright so this concludes the end of our quick video on how to modify the Milwaukee M12 battery charger for 240 volt operation now I can't say that I recommend doing this because it will void your warranty so I do not encourage you to do this unless you know exactly what you are doing uh, with that thanks for watching and catch you next time